How you doing? This is what I call basic picking etude. An etude is just a short example um, of a piece of music. It, it should sound a little bit more like music than, than just a pr practice progression, I would say. So um, what you want to do is work through some of these, and I'm trying to make them sound a little bit more like songs versus just your basic practice picking examples, you know. So we're going to go through a C chord and a minor a D7 over A, and all that means is it's a D7 chord, but you're going to pick the A string in the bass with it. And then a G. Later on we have E minor, A minor, and E minor. So those are the, the chords that we're going to be using. Um, because this is in the basic category, I'm going to stick with all down strokes. So you can see me picking here, it's down, So what I want you to do is stick with downs as we progress into the intermediate and advanced. Obviously, we're going to be doing alternate picking. But just for now, just to stick with our down picks, let's start with the C chord. A minor. And now the D7 shape. And the G shape. Now you'll notice on the C chord to the A minor chord, these are things that you have to remember, uh, being a beginner or, in, or a little bit more than a beginner. The first finger and the second finger on the C chord are the same as the A minor chord. The third finger is the only one that changes. Now I am going to shift them slightly on the fret, but you can see they stay the same. These are called chord pairs. you got to remember that, because there are many times when you're going to be switching quickly and you, you're going to look for a finger that will stay on a string. Now, from A minor to D7, guess what? The first finger stays on that note right there, which is a C, so now you're here. Now the next one, and I did this by design, by the way, so I'm trying to progress you through in a natural way, and you can start to see things. Um, from D7 to G, the third finger will stay on the, the high string, and slide ahead one fret, and these two fingers will drop down here. They retain their shape, as you can see, they move in tandem, so, there they go, just like that. And then back to C, that's the only tricky one. There's no way to get from this G shape to that C without being moved. From E minor to A minor, you're going to have to move, but these two retain their shape. See how I freeze them together, and I just drop them down one string, and then I have to add the first finger. So, all down picks. You want to try to anchor your little finger to the guitar, or anchor something of your palm on the strings, on the end pins or the bridge pins, I'm sorry, down here, and you want to do this. And then this chord says G slash D, and all that means is it's a G chord, but instead of playing these low notes here that, that have the G and the B, D is the lowest sounding note that you would play, and you strum from the D down. It's just a little different sound, G over D. And then it goes back and repeats the... Um, what I wanted to say with the G chord now, the first one, the C, the A minor, and the D7, you're picking from the fifth string to the high string and so forth. When you go to the G, you don't pick the fifth string, you're going to skip it. Like that, you jump right over it. So then just watch that, it's all in the tablature and the notation. Now, E minor is our next chord. What I'm going to do is pick... See, I picked four strings down on the E minor, and then I went to the high string. I pick four back. A little different pattern. Um, now the A minor, same as before. 
the reason the E is different because it's a six string pattern versus a five string pattern, you know, so when I'm on my way down, I skip over the B string and I start here. Now the A minor, it's right up in the back. And then the D7 over A. And then we go to that G over D. And okay, now I'm going to put the metronome on 65. It says 80 here, but um, well actually I'm going to start it on 60, I'm sorry. Here's 60. One and two and three and ready, go. Notice I'm watching my kicking. You should do the same. If you're not familiar with your picking, just watch your hand. You have to glance back and forth, that's okay, to get the shapes of the left hand on E minor, A minor, E minor, D7, G over D, and then A minor's next. Okay, I'm going to move this up to 70 and we're going to do it again. I'll count you in. One, two, ready, go. Now there's one more tempo I listed on here is 80 is like the you know your goal tempo but always go back down to 50 or 60 and work your way towards the goal tempo. You'll notice the whole time I was really kind of looking at my right hand. I want you guys to to, to think about that. If, if if you're looking at the music or, or the left hand, that's good and you need to do that. But sometimes if you're working on just picking, you might want to just concentrate on looking at that hand. I don't see enough people, my students, to come in that I see regularly. I don't see them looking at their hand enough. Now, for instance, if I need to glance up the music and then come back down and look back and forth, that's fine. But you have to remember where you are in the music. So getting those kind of habits developed in your practice session is very important. But this is basic picking etudes. So I would go through all the basic picking examples first and then work into the etudes here and then go into the intermediate section and so forth and keep working your way through. Okay, I hope that was helpful and interesting. Uh, things get much more advanced and much more fun, but just stick at it. And, or stick with it, I should say, and um, it, you know, keep watching the videos and progress. Don't jump ahead. It might be tempting to jump ahead, but just kind of stick with it and, and, and go at a slow pace. You will get there. Okay, thanks a lot. We'll see you in the next video.